What does it mean to close a sale? Well, it's when the buyer and the seller make a commitment to the transaction. In The Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, talks all about this in the infamous scene where he tells his co-workers, sell me this pen. Here, take a look. Sounds easy, right? Well, maybe, maybe not. It largely comes down to supply and demand. You either have to create demand around your product or answer to an already existing demand. You have to tell your customer, hey, you really need our product if you want to be successful. Really dig into their pain points and explain how your product can resolve those issues. Rookie marketers will try to sell their product or service to everyone, but the real pros know that they have to weed out the customers who have a real need for it. Now here's the million dollar question. How do you close the deal? Let's go over a few strategies. First, we have the assumptive close. Now in this approach, you behave like the deal is already done and you already know that the buyer wants to make a commitment. You're going to use phrases like, how many units would you like to purchase? Or here are some discounts available. The key is to be assertive without being aggressive and you wanna be sure you only take this approach after you have effectively conveyed the benefits of your product so that they're still fresh in the consumer's mind. Next, we have the puppy dog clothes. You know how some pet stores will let you take a puppy home so that you can give it sort of a, a trial run and then inevitably you end up keeping the puppy because why wouldn't you? Similar to that, sales professionals will offer a free trial of the product so that you get a taste of what it's like and hopefully become hooked. One example is Hulu. They give you a free 30 day trial and after that you will probably not cancel because Hulu is amazing. Third, we have the now or never close. One example of this is Black Friday, when we rush to buy products because we know that that's the cheapest we're going to get them all year. These deals build a sense of urgency and trigger a feeling of FOMO, the fear of missing out. The same goes with your own product or service. You could offer a limited time deal so that the customer is incentivized to buy now. This works best on buyers that are already interested and you use that sense of urgency just to give them that last little nudge that they need. Engage Bay, an affordable all-in-one CRM suite, did this during the holidays. This holiday season, we slashed our prices by 40%, so all of the small business owners that were already thinking about becoming our customers finally did it. Fourth, we have the takeaway close. For this one, we want you to pretend that you're talking to your teenager. This is all about reverse psychology. Let's say that your teenager wants to go to a concert and you firmly tell them no. What's going to happen? They're gonna to wanna to go even more because now the concert is like the forbidden fruit. We always want the things we can't have. For the sales professional, this means taking sort of a backwards approach where you sell by not selling. I know it sounds crazy, but when you tell your potential customers that maybe they're not ready for your product, it spurs them to buy even more because now they want what they think they can't have. If you want to learn more about this controversial approach, we have a whole separate video on how you can sell better by not selling. Next, we have the summary close. There's a good chance that your potential buyer is juggling multiple offers and opportunities. So how can you make sure that you stand out from your competitors? By summarizing the benefits and the features of your product and reminding them of how your product can solve their problems. When you're concise and repetitive, there's a greater likelihood that you're always gonna be stuck at the front of their mind. Kind of like when you get a song stuck in your head. Next, we have the one to 10 closing technique. With this technique, after you've pitched the customer, you bluntly ask them where they are on a scale of one to 10. One being not interested in your product at all, or 10 being very interested. If they answer somewhere between one and six, you can say something like, whoa, I was way off. What were you actually looking for? And at this point, you kind of need to start over and really listen to them. If they're anywhere between seven and eight, you can say something like, okay, we're getting close, but why weren't you a six? This encourages them to talk about all of the things that they like about your product. And if they're a nine or a 10, you can say, awesome, let's start filling out paperwork. A lot of salespeople make the mistake of rambling nonstop and not really listening to their customers. And that means that the customer is just going to lose interest. With this approach, you keep them engaged and also encourage them to give you really valuable feedback. One thing to always remember when trying to close is this, don't try too hard. Instead of pressuring the customer, empathize with them. Make a point of listening and helping and not selling and the close will very naturally happen as a byproduct. Also remember to play to your strengths, work on your weaknesses, and be open to the sale whenever it might come. 
The close can happen at any point during the sales process, so always test out new strategies. Now that you know the nuances of closing a deal, you might be thinking, how do I keep track of all of this? Try Engage Bay, an all-in-one sales, marketing, and support software designed for startups and small businesses. Engage Bay offers sales and task automation so you can always stay on top of where your leads are at. Give our all-in-one CRM software a try and see how it can help you close more deals faster. Before you go, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss our new content.